All right, we're going to move on here, and I'm going to give you the basic building block of all claw hammer banjo playing, at least the way that I see it. Uh, and this is kind of the way that most people conceptualize claw hammer playing. Pretty much anybody who's going to show you how to play this style is going to start by showing you the basic rhythmic unit that your right hand performs. Um, and everybody has a different name for this. They're all kind of based on onomatopoeia. Um, I call this the boom chicka strum, or the basic strum. So when you hear me use those terms, I'm talking about what we're about to learn right here. A little basic boom chicka strum. I'll show you the motions, give you an idea how to practice it, how to hold your hand, and, and how to get into this motion. And then I'll set you loose on this for a little while till you can make it flow uh, fairly automatically. Other people might call this a bum ditty strum or some other nonsense uh, words to represent the sound that you get when you get this little galloping boom chicka boom chicka sound. It's kind of the basic rhythmic unit of most uh, American folk music and uh, American music forms so it's a really really good place to start. First off I'm going to show you how to basically hold your right hand. The reason we call this the claw hammer style presumably is because of the way that your right hand holds a fairly static position that looks kind of like an old claw hammer. Um, this, this position is really important to the style. Everybody's going to have a slight variation because of physiology and personal inclination and all that. Everybody's going to have a slight variation on exactly how they hold their hand, but the basic notion is something about like this. I'm going to give you a few different angles, uh, give you a few different descriptions, let you take a look at how your hand should be held. Uh, but let me give you a couple angles right now. Here's a kind of a reverse front angle. Here's how it might look like from this side. And here's how it might look like from that side. Get the basic idea. It's kind of a loose claw. And when we apply it to the strings, it's going to be about right here. I'll give you some close-ups here in a second. Um, and then all we're going to do is execute this rhythm, which is boom, chicka, boom, chicka. And that's long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, boom, chicka, boom, chicka. So if you can get one boom, chicka down, you've got the basics of the whole style. Let me get in and show you how we do this. We start with the first note, the boom note, and we're gonna use the back of our finger. Now I use my middle finger, some people use their index finger. Uh, there's a lot of variation among different players as to which fingers they use. Some people use a combination of fingers, even including sometimes the ring finger. But for the, the sake of simplicity, I'll just tell you that I use my middle finger alone. And you can use your index finger if you'd like. Whatever feels most comfortable to you from the beginning, that's the path I think you should, you should follow. I will refer all the time to the middle finger or the second finger as we've learned to call this. And if you're using the index finger, you'll just have to do that, that uh, transference in your mind. All right, so we take the back of our middle finger, our middle finger nail, and we hit it against a string. In this case, we're going to hit our third string, and we're going to play that open. By that, I mean we're not going to fret anything over here. We're just going to do this. Let's take a closer look. All right, here's some close-ups of a boom note, as best as I can give you with my camera setup here. Um, we'll start out with the on-looking position, just like you're watching somebody play sitting across from them. Not as illuminating as some of the other angles, but just so you can get a feel. We have a boom. Boom. So notice I'm using my whole hand. Boom. Even though it's just my fingertip. I actually have a little bit of a nail on my finger that I use, but just my fingertip or my fingernail. The back of that finger. Boom. Boom. And notice I'm bouncing up a little bit. Again, an exaggerated motion for the sake of instruction here, but I'm bouncing. Boom. Hit that note, boom. Kind of bounce back like it's a trampoline. Boom. Boom. 
give you some different angles here as best I can. Uh, mainly, now I'm going to point my index finger out of the way. This isn't how I normally hold my hand, but that way you can see the, what the active finger is doing there. You can see my third finger right behind. And uh, you can see kind of the angle I'm coming down on the string. Boom. 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 I'm hitting the, again, the third string open. I'm going to go ahead and hit the fourth string because you can probably see that a little better at this camera angle. Boom. a little bit of a trampoline bounce. I'm going to go back to the third string. Now that we've got the boom note figured out, going to go ahead and put the other two parts of this this three part motion into effect the chick and the uh motion and these are interrelated in my mind these are connected and that's really a crucial part of understanding exactly how the strum works um, especially as you uh, go ahead and apply it to real time musical situations you're going to want to understand this connection between the chick and the uh now what I call the chick part of the boom chicka strum is essentially what a lot of people would call a brush. We're brushing across some strings here. Not all of the strings. I'm kind of aiming vaguely for the first three strings and you'll remember that's one, two, three from the ground up. One, two, three. Kind of vaguely aiming there. I'm not worried about hitting each one in a really articulate manner. I'm brushing through. So there's got to be, a, even though we're holding this uh, static shape, which probably is creating a little tension for you right now, there still has to be a certain amount of relaxation as we strike these strings because we're really brushing through them. And here the difference, I'm not going to really dig in as an example because it'll overload the microphones here, but the difference between really trying to articulate each string and this brushing through. So I'm kind of aiming at the first three strings. I'm thinking of it as one motion and one sound. If you've ever strummed a guitar or another instrument, then you know what I'm talking about when you brush or you strum through a set of strings. All right. Now, when we brush, we, at the same time, we do this chick motion we're landing the thumb on the fifth string. So, chick, uh, now so that last note, the last part of our three part strum, boom, chick, uh, is gonna be our thumb playing the fifth string. So, so far we're just using the back of our third finger, or our first, or our second finger rather, or our first finger, whatever you prefer. Back of a finger for the boom, chick. Boom, chick. Now we're connecting the chick to a thumb note on the fifth string. And for the most part, for the whole duration of this course anyhow, that's all your thumb's going to do is play the fifth string. And that's, that's a basic tenet of claw hammer playing. Um, later you can get more complicated and kind of pull the goalie there and move the thumb down to some other strings. But that's really an advanced technique. And a lot of accomplished players don't even utilize that, uh, moving the thumb off the fifth string at all. Um, so, again, thumb on the fifth string. So it's going to be boom, chick, uh. Now, that's a really simple way. That's a simplification of what's happening there. Again, you want to connect the chick and the uh. So when I go chick, I'm actually locking and loading my thumb onto the fifth string. Uh, you can't see yet from this wide angle, but I'll give you some close-ups here in a second and re-explain this to you and let you get a little closer look. But basically, as I strum through, remember we're brushing, so it's a really light thing and we're passing right through the strings. 
And the way I like to think of it is the one thing that's going to stop us from going all the way down past the banjo as we brush through the strings is our thumb, which is kind of hanging out on the side here, is going to catch the fifth string and it's going to just stop us there. The same way if you're familiar with uh, aircraft carriers, if a plane comes down and lands on an aircraft carrier, it's a very short runway. So, or a short landing strip in this case. And so in order for that plane and all that speed, in order for it to stop in time, there's a wire and the plane has a kind of hook on the bottom that catches the cable and actually slows the plane down, helps slow it down. Think of that, if that's something you're familiar with, that idea, think of that as a good visualization for what's happening here. You're brushing through, your thumb's catching you and stopping you on this fifth string. As a result, you're creating a little tension on that fifth string, kind of like a slingshot. And I'm exaggerating a lot of these moves as I teach them to you, and you should exaggerate them as you're learning. Later, it'll be more subtle. But for now, think of a slingshot. You want to actually see some tension. You want to see that fifth string pulled down a little bit, like a slingshot. Of course, it's going to be down this way. You're going to be pulled down this way. Your thumb's going to hold it down a little bit. Then when we kind of come back up, It'll almost automatically sound. So you want to make sure that you're doing most of your effort with the thumb during the brush, during that lock and load, that aircraft carrier moment where you catch the plane. We've caught it there. I'm already locked and loaded. I've got pressure down there. So when I come up, it almost just plays itself. So if we get rid of the boom note for a second, we can just try chick uh chick uh chick uh and the focus should be on letting that uh note happen fairly effortlessly just by releasing the tension that's there bringing the hand back up and letting the tension that's already in the thumb against that string letting it kind of resolve into a nice little pluck um, one thing you want to avoid and you'll find yourself doing this probably especially if you've played other string instruments before is actually kind of shooting for the string like a plucking motion like this. I don't want to go boom, chick, uh, boom, chick, uh. I want to keep that basic hand motion or hand shape basically in place. It's fairly, a, it's pretty much a static shape and I'm moving the whole thing as a unit. So there's more movement from the elbow and the wrist depending on exactly how you pull this off. Um, than there is here in the fingers. You want to think of no movement at all in the fingers and focus on moving the wrist and maybe from the elbow as well. So that last note, there's a little movement in the thumb. It's just because I'm coming back and releasing the tension. All right, I've talked about this a bit. Um, I want you to take a look at some close-ups here and then try this out on your own for a while. Closer angle here, closer look at the chicka part of the strum. Again, I'll start with the onward facing angle here. And chick. Uh, remember the chick is a strum. We're just brushing through the strings. Vaguely aiming for the first three strings. Nothing precise there. And brushing through but letting our thumb catch on the fifth string. Hopefully you can see there how that fifth string is getting pulled down kind of like a slingshot creating tension there. It's like we're locking and loading. Kind of like the tension you need to shoot an arrow from a bow. So that's chick. Uh. Chick. Uh. Chick. Uh. Now again, you see my thumb move a bit because that's because I've got this tension going of the fifth string and when I lift my hand up, the thumb kind of goes back to where it wants to be, kind of releases the tension. So it's almost like that plucking motion just kind of happens automatically. So you think, you don't want to think too much about, you don't want to try to move your thumb like this from the joint too much consciously. You want to think of it as moving this whole unit up, up off of the string, letting that note essentially sound itself. I know that sounds a little vague, but 
the more you keep that in mind and practice and watch what I'm doing, watch other players, uh, the quicker you'll understand what I'm talking about there. So again, chick, uh, chick, uh, chick, uh, give you the other angle, chick, uh, chick, uh, chick. Once you get comfortable with that, you should be able to. Run a bunch of them together. At that point, you're ready to put the whole strum together, which is the boom, followed by the chick. Uh, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. Boom, chick, uh, boom, chick, uh, boom, chick, uh. And when you practice this, I recommend that as you learn it, you just do a single strum, boom, chick, uh, and then take a break, take a breath. Try a single strum again. Boom, chick, uh. Take a break, take a breath. You really want to isolate that single unit and get feeling really comfortable with the motions before you start to string them together like I just did. Boom, chick, uh, boom, chick, uh, etc. Uh, that's the ultimate goal, but you want to take your time, work on the isolated single unit of rhythm there. Boom, chick, uh. Get feeling good about that, then string them all together. That's what you need to do before you move on, so have fun with that. Go make some noise, um, and just keep working at that, banging on that thing, until it starts to flow a little bit. If you have any questions, email me, ryan at playbetterbanjo.com. Once you get this basic strum, you can grow from there really easily. You can add variations and stack musical ideas on top of this basic motion and it's all kind of smoother sailing from there it's kind of a you're kind of coasting downhill after you get this motion down and get it kind of second nature and automatic in your right hand um, so what I recommend you do right now is stop the course and take a few days to really just repeatedly practice this motion come back and reference the video as much as you need to to check on your progress and your technique make sure you're not uh, doing anything that that I wouldn't want you to do uh, and just get a feel for this basic boom chicka boom chicka and once you can roll that boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka once you can kind of string them together and play a lot of boom chickas in a row in a nice rhythmic fashion and feel fairly comfortable with it you only feel so comfortable in the first few days but once you feel like you've got it down well enough uh, then you should move on. This is really crucial that you really take your time here at this point in the learning process because um, you get really need this foundational motion down before we start branching off into all the other fun stuff.